head loss tube and sleeve from Creatively on Monday the 17th of October 2022 from very warm and humid Queensland, very tropical, rain's coming, um, hopefully not for a couple of days, um, but yeah, the, um, those in the know know that uh, the Victoria's been inundated with early tropical rain and have had a lot of flooding and they're saying that the rainy season might start early this year, might start soon instead of um, later in November so yeah hopefully hopefully it's not too bad when it does come um, but yeah I'm here in Brisbane with my sister and my family for another couple of days and um, we had my niece's 21st on Saturday and I just couldn't film yesterday on su Sunday um, you might hear a whole lot of background noise. There's, my sister has four, four birds. She has a couple of Alexandrine parakeets and um, these other couple of birds that I've forgotten what they're called. They're really beautiful to look at, but they're bloody noisy. And then outside the window, one of her dogs, her a little bit fat um, lab is panting. Um, actually we've had a bit of a vet drama this morning her older dog which is a border collie lab cross uh, this morning was had some neurological symptoms so they've just had the vet come and do a um, like a home visit vet come and mobile vet I guess and either he's suffering from I call it geriatric vestibular syndrome or whatever which was some um, which usually comes right um, they'll try them on some anti make some dizzy and nauseous and um, hopefully over the next week or two he'll come right and I've given him some drugs to help with the nausea and dizziness if he doesn't come right, then it's probably more um, something more serious, like a you know, brain something, a brain bleed, a brain stroke or something. But um, yeah, and but they'll know I guess in a week or two. If, he's, if he hasn't got worse and he's got better, then it means it's this thing that dogs get and usually goes away and just not have they're not comfortable when they have it so I was hoping to get my sister on do a bit of a cameo but um she and one of my nephews just gone off to get the prescription from the vet and stuff so um probably just not a good day for her to jump on the video um if she feels like it later I might just add a little extra phone or something on show some of her stitching but yeah it's just been one of those days really so what have I been doing while I'm here um so I got over here Monday we sat up really late so I went to bed after midnight which for me would have been about 3 3 a.m closer to 4 a.m New Zealand time um so and then on the Tuesday we did um, my sister and I just spent most of the day out running errands to get stuff ready to get stuff we needed for my niece's 21st um, and then on the Wednesday we did a bit of shop I did a bit of shopping um, and then went back to one of the stores to pick up my glasses because when I'd be swapped from my glasses to my sunglasses which is a prescription somehow I must have dropped them and someone kindly handed them into the shop so we had to go back to that shop to get them um, and then I think Thursday we spent the day sewing, um, finishing up costumes because my niece had a themed party. Uh, everyone had to come with a, in a costume starting with the letter of your initial, your, your name. Um, so we were sewing various bits and pieces, um, and hemming purple fabric to make table runners um, because the I guess the scheme was black and white purple and silver um, 
then I think Friday was cleaning, like cleaning out the back patio where the party was, um, and mopping down the tiles, um, all that sort of malarkey, uh, making sure the dog beds were clean so they could be moved to the garage temporarily. Um, and then I think Saturday was, oh, and there was food prep as well. Saturday was then getting all the decor set up and the rest of the food and then yeah so it's all been very much party oriented um I've got do I have any footage I might add just a couple of photos of um I went as a ladybird so I made some big puffy sort of ladybird shaped well they're not really the wings are they the wings are underneath but the outer shell and wore some little antenna I guess um so the photo of me and my sister was made Marion so I'll put that in um I'll put names on there's a couple of photos I'll add in just to show you what we were dressed up, up as um so we had a really good time lots of karaoke um too much drinking um, too much food, uh, very late night, so yeah. But, um, so apart from just chilling and spending time with family and stuff, we've been mostly party related. Um, tomorrow's Tuesday and we're going to do a bit of shopping. Um, I want to do a little bit of shopping. A couple of, there's a couple of shops over here I want to go to for some summer clothes. And then we're all going to go out, the whole extended family is going to go out for... Um, to a Singaporean restaurant to have dinner um, and then I fly on, fly home Wednesday afternoon. But um, today is, we're going to have a barbecue tonight um, and yeah, the vet thing's kind of throwing our plans a little awry but that's okay, like, you know, the dogs are not, um, you know, they... The dog that's unwell is the alpha as well, so the other dog is not is probably the one who's the most upset and isn't, doesn't understand what's going on. Um, like he usually waits for, so the um, lab is Zach, and Zach usually waits for Cody to eat first, so then because Cody's off his food, Zach's like, I'm not going to eat. He could go a couple of days without food, he'll be fine. <laughs> um... Yeah, and I need to bring Dad this afternoon because, of course, I usually talk to him every day or two, but the time change, the time difference makes that really hard. Um, I think he's doing okay. He's probably just missing the company and stuff. Um, on Wednesday, um, we, I did, we did make our way to All Threads over at East Brisbane. Um, it's probably about a 35-minute drive from where my sister lives and they like you to have to book in a browsing session um, the shop is really small and they're still kind of mindful of COVID and keeping um, to allow people to be able to distance in the store you can sort of only fit three or four people in so we only really had half an hour guaranteed um, so I um, booked a session, we got, and they close at 2, they're only open 10 till 2, so it kind of makes it a bit tricky to get there. <laughs> um, so I, anyway, we booked a session at 1, um, and got over there, um, and I took some really dodgy footage um, when we were about to leave, so I'll just pop a little bit of footage in.
so of course we only had half an hour guaranteed again if other people who booked a session and needed to turn up then they you know you kind of have to leave so um i had taken rather a large list uh, depending on what i could find quick flick through the charts there was sort of only really could spend five or ten minutes looking through charts and they're not necessarily organized by at all and it's just in bins so I just sort of had to flick through and see what was there so I had a quick flick through and there was nothing that leapt out to, at me that I really needed to get um but there it was lovely to see um some Gloriana on the wall um and I do have a chart a Supplico chart um Rhapsody in Red that is on my list to stitch and I think that's what I'm going to use them some of that was it 40 count toy toy that I got from Country Stitch last month anyway it calls for Gloriana which you may or may not know is quite hard to get I don't think anyone in New Zealand stocks it and when I had looked up their website or Threads website a couple of times they never had one or the other colour in stock but she had she had some I decided to get it because um, I had written down what was called for but a note that um, I could get a substitution if you know if I found something else I liked um, and so I got five skeins of um, five skeins of cranberry and I got Five skeins of crimson. So those are the called for silks um, for the Rhapsody in Red. I do have a little, um, I put a picture on, I've taken a screenshot of it if I, it looks like that, in case you're not sure. So it's just a large, um, large band sampler with a border, really. Anyway, so of course, if you know, you know, Gloriana, Gloriana is horrendously expensive. So that um, took up a big chunk of my budget, but it is lovely. So I got that, so 10 scans of Gloriana. And then I had a look at what fabric they had. Um, mostly all of her over dyes already chopped up, either in, mostly in fat halves. I didn't really want to get a fat half, but I did get um, this fat half of fibre on a worm parchment. Um, she had a couple of different pieces. I don't want to take it out of plastic. Maybe I'll put a light on. I'll put a light on. I don't know if that'll help. I'll take out the plastic. This piece has some green in it, um, some nice blotches and some nice green. Um, so yeah, a fat half is tons. I'll be able to get a few projects out of that. So that's the only fabric that I got um, because it's, you know, 108 Australian. <laughs> um, and I had to convert everything to the New Zealand and the um, dollar's not doing so good, the Kiwi dollar. And then I had talked to my, well, because my sister was with me, she had a wee look around, but she's working on a project. She only does one at a time and she hasn't stitched for a while, so she had a wee look at kits and stuff, but didn't buy anything. But I'd shown her um, Here Be Lions and Here Be Dragons that I showed you I got last week and said to her for her to pick the thread I should do it in. So she went with some bold choices which I might end up adding a solid in particularly in the borders where you've got the negative stitching I'm not sure but um got she picked um for the lions a thread work she wanted the variegated she picked the variegated um, so we went with 1040 and it has 
go sort of from caramel through to really dark brown. Okay. And for the dragons, she picked one with some green in it. Um, and it's 1043. That one. That'll be interesting. So it'll be kind of fun stitching something that she and I think I'll stitch these on that parchment and I should only I think I can get these both on a on a fat eighth each so a fat quarter so I should still have half that fabric left. So I got those. Well the only I did buy a new design dropped at History Sigmusta or on the Silk app and it's um uh, I think it's one by Dorothea um, and it's Colours of Autumn and I just took a screenshot of it so that I could show it here and I just saw it and I loved the colours I was like oh, yeah I'm getting that so I don't know when I'll stitch it probably next year but I um, I will do I think I'll use the call for um, sitting on the floor I'm not very comfortable uh, I will use the call for um, over a soir, soir d'Alger on that just because the colours are lovely and rich and that's what it's charted for so I think I'll do that um, and probably just on a antique white or something um, to keep the colours um, vibrant and stuff so yeah that's something that I bought as well so that's all the new stuff so stitching wise hardly done anything I haven't really had that much time um, I really only and the light it's sort of harder when you've got a lounge full of people and you're talking and People are watching telly and stuff, and um, and the lighting's just you know I don't have my light and all that, but um, I did pull out on Thursday evening and a little bit on Friday. I pulled out Crowns of the Kingdom, um, and got a little bit more done on that. I'm stitching this with called for um, Petite Treasure Braid or Rainbow Gallery threads on 32 count antique white linen. And so where I got to from last time you saw it, I had started this crown, so finished that, got that one, that one, that one, that one, and then started this one. So it's very sparkly, um, very pretty, and I'm enjoying it. Um, yeah, it's a nice little stitch to get a little crown done and call it day so that is all my stitching so just a wee whip of course I did have a new start last week um, I did a little bit as a, it's for me probably the smallest start I've ever had um, on the Sunday because I was busy <laughs> but um, I what was it oh my gosh I can't even remember can't remember what it was but I didn't bring it so I'll show that next week when I'm home um, yeah a little bit of start so I'm not planning to start this week so just a week off for start so I'm a little bit ahead anyway I think um, because I did a couple of it I did two starts around um, when I started crowns of the kingdom there was that week was a two start week we had 12 people here on the night of the 21st like 12 people stay um, and here for breakfast next morning, there were like people everywhere, <laughs> like bodies everywhere. <laughs> if you could find a spot to put an air mattress, that's where you went. Um, so it was just, yeah, there were just people all over the house and it was very crowded. <laughs> it's very different from my house where I'm there on my own. It's very quiet and it's, it's all these people. So, but it's been really nice. We've just been, yeah, just really relaxing and not putting any pressure on ourselves. Oh, one cool thing we did do, we went, um, not not my younger nephew and his girlfriend because they were working um they work in hospitalities they work in evenings often but the other six of us went to and it's did an escape room at a local um, mall and we did a mob um it's called the mob job and it was a murder mystery one so we didn't actually have to escape we had to find out deduce who the two killers were by you know unlocking things and getting clues and stuff um and 
we did it with I think 10 minutes to spare and it was a like nine nine or nine and a half out of ten difficulty um, and they said the success rate was about 64% so while we weren't the fastest we managed to complete it well within the time and yeah a good chunk of chunk of people don't don't get there um, I think the difficulty was because it relied on a lot of reading other escape rooms I've done have been less about reading and more around physical clues or physical tricks you might have to I don't know pull a lever in one room and someone else has to see what it does in another room and you might have to coordinate things but this we had lots of like evidence and police files and things to read where oh you go oh you know log and to logic out like you know this suspect gets got ruled out because it turns out they were in jail at the time when the murder occurred or and another sus suspect got ruled out because it turns out their body had been found in a dumpster the day before and all this sort of stuff of course totally fictional but um um yeah it was kind of fun we had a really good time I think it was three of us had done one before and three of us hadn't done one before so everyone was pretty much pretty keen to go back and do another one which is really nice so it was just nice to get all the young people away from screens and spend some time together so we did that that was pretty cool so looking forward to yeah dinner out on Tuesday night and barbecue tonight and just yeah it's been another couple of days with family and then heading home um, to my bed and some quiet and not to have a dog snoring outside my window all night <laughs> or currently panting <laughs> um, yeah anyway i'm gonna i'm gonna wrap this up so yeah i might see if i can get my sister to do a little extra what she'd be doing we'll just do that a little bonus video if she's up for it but yeah as i said just giving them a bit of space to worry about the dog and stuff so um thanks for for watching and um yeah looking forward to getting back to my regularly scheduled program next week um enjoy your stitching and in the meantime don't let your needles rust ciao